Hi, my name is Simon Goff. I'm the CEO of MTV Exit, the campaign to end exploitation and human trafficking. This is my first Google Hangout. It's incredibly exciting for a couple of reasons. One, that um, we're in Myanmar and we're doing this Google Hangout from Myanmar for the very first time. So that is incredibly exciting that we can use technology um, to reach the rest of the world um, from this country. Secondly, um, we had a fantastic uh, concert last night with Jason Raz in front of Shwedagon Pagoda. Um, this was an historic event. The rest of the panelists were with us last night. Um, I thank them all for being here early on, uh, on a certain, well, relatively early on a Monday morning. Um, but, you know, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to do a few introductions so we know um, who's here. So, firstly, we have Ambassador Luce Cedarbacker from the U.S. Um, government, from the State Department, who is the ambassador at large um, from the Office to Monitor and Combat Human Trafficking. And we have Nguyen Nguyen Thien from UNICEF. She's a child uh, protection specialist um, working in Myanmar for UNICEF Myanmar. We have Kim Wong Win from the RTIP project. Um, that's the uh, Asia Regional Trafficking in Persons Project here in Myanmar. And finally, we have Deb Rosen, Deborah Rosen, I should say, but we can keep it more informal than that. Deb Rosen, the Movement Director from Walk Free. So what, what I'd like to do is actually ask each of the panelists just to, to uh, tell us a little bit about what they do in the fight against trafficking so that you can um, hear a little bit more from them um, about their role. So, so firstly, Ambassador Cedarbacker, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thanks, Simon. Um, one of the things that the American government is doing in the fight against human trafficking is supporting other governments and civil society around the world. And so my office works with not just governments like here in Myanmar, but also um, with the folks at the UNICEF, uh, with uh, established NGOs uh, and new uh, partners who are coming into the fight. So we're really excited about what's happened over the last few days uh, here in Yangon, um, but also as it being a good continuation of the hard work that MTV Exit has been doing in the region to be able to bring people to the fight against modern slavery. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, UNICEF in Myanmar worked with uh, government partners and also with the uh, INGO and NGO implementing partners to fight uh, human trafficking in Myanmar. Uh, UNICEF in Myanmar especially focused on protection aspect and rehabilitation and reintegration of return trafficking survivors from uh, other countries back home to Myanmar. And we are also uh, raising awareness in the community through the community groups on child protection, child rights, and uh, prevention of trafficking and protection of children from abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Great. Thank you very much. Ukin? <coughs> Our Asia Regional Trafficking in Persons Project works in seven countries within the ASEAN region and I'm the country project coordinator of this uh, for Myanmar. Our project works mainly with the government law enforcement and the prosecutorial and the judiciary uh, agencies uh, to strengthen their capacities to be able to handle human trafficking issues in a much more uh, uh, right-centered based approach so that uh, the, there is uh, no refuge for no safe haven for the uh, traffickers and also to bring justice uh, to the victims. That is what we are trying to do within the country. And ours is a regional project, as I've mentioned before, working in seven countries of the ASEAN uh, region, except in Singapore, uh, Brunei, and Malaysia. Right. Deborah. Thank you. Um, so Walk Free is an international movement to end modern slavery. And our role, I think, on this issue is to connect activists to uh, corporate and legislative change, actions all over the world that can help to implement policies that will protect people that are, or help protect people uh, uh, at risk, as well as uh, get people out of situations of modern slavery. Fantastic. Great. So. 
We're really happy to have um, four members, um, four MTV Exit Youth Ambassadors from across the ASEAN region. So we have Sonita in Cambodia, we have Joey in the Philippines, we have Hang in Vietnam, and we have Julie in Thailand. So thank you so much for joining us um, this morning. I'm going to be asking each of you to join the conversation in a minute. But, but why are we here? Uh, human trafficking is the illegal trade in human beings. It's modern day slavery, and it's one of the largest criminal industries in the world today. This is an incredibly important issue. Um, MTV Exit has been working on this since 2003 um, with many partners. And I'd just like to say thank you um, to our partners here in Asia, to um, the US government for US aid, um, to Walk Free, um, to the Australian government and AusAid, to the government of Myanmar, to UNIAP. Um, without all their support, we wouldn't have been able to produce the incredible um, concert last night. We wouldn't be producing this hangout here today. So I think this is a testament to collaboration and the fact that we will have to work together to um, combat human trafficking. So. Sonita, you are up. So Sonita is from Cambodia. So I'd like you firstly to um, give the panel a little bit of background about what you've been doing to combat trafficking in your community, um, where you live. Um, just just um, give us a little bit of a background um, of who you are. And then please direct your question to um, Ambassador Cedarbacker. So uh, over to you, Sonita. Yes, well, thanks. Um, first of all, I would like to say good morning to all the panelists. Um, my name is Sonita. I am from Cambodia and I am 20 years old. Um, I am a senior at law school and I took the board major. One is international law and one is international relation. Well, so far I used to join the MTV Exit um, in youth um, session in Cambodia and I am also a youth ambassador from Cambodia. And also um, I have just um, joined uh, the MTV uh, youth session in Jakarta, uh, Indonesia, yes, just like two weeks ago. Um, well, actually um, from the journey from the MTV exit, I have gained a lot of knowledge about how to prevent and to raise awareness of human trafficking. And so far, I have uh, run the online and offline campaign. And about the offline campaign, I already uh, made some discussion on my class. And one more thing, um, I used to organize one concert at my university. And it was about uh, the grateful, thankful to lecturer, and there were a lot of people joining. And I and my team, we were uh, wrote um, some script and wrote some moral story that related to human trafficking. And we also perform um, the the movie according to that uh, to that our um, our performance. And also currently, we also produce a video clip related to human trafficking and we also post it and share it on the uh, social media such as Facebook and uh, Twitter and um, Google Plus and also on YouTube channel. Um, this is also uh, briefly of my background and now I would like to um, ask one question to uh, Ambassador Baka, Lucis Baka. Well, um, like we all know that uh, human trafficking is a global issue. And I wonder, like, do victims of the human trafficking look different um, in the Western world to the East? And I wonder if you could share with an example uh, related to that. Thank you. A very great question, and, and Sunita, I mean, you're doing a lot of fantastic work. And also, from a legal profession, I know uh, Ambassador Cedarbaka has a history of that. So please. Well, first of all, Sunita, I'm glad to see that there's another uh, lawyer uh, on the, the chat uh, today. I think that it's important for people to not just be interested in working on human trafficking, but to go to law school, to, to train themselves in whatever they're doing so that they can actually make a difference out there. You know, this notion of, of whether human trafficking is the same in the East uh, and the West is an interesting one. I think that in 
uh, many of the developed countries, the thing that uh, makes people vulnerable is not always poverty. It's not always that they're trying to make a better life for their parents or for their family. Um, sometimes it ends up being poverty in that the person might be from a part of society that nobody cares about. So in Canada and in the United States, sometimes you have uh, people from the Native American communities, um, or you'll have people from other ethnic minorities. Um, you'll also have uh, Caucasians in the West. Um, sometimes uh, I'm thinking about a, a girl uh, named Tanya who, when she was 14 years old, uh, she was having problems with her parents. She didn't agree with them on things. She felt that they didn't understand her. And a guy came to her school and started telling her that he cared about her more than her parents did, that she should go with him. And of course, that was a pimp who was coming to recruit her and put her into a life of prostitution. So I think that what happens is that even though it's not exactly the same, he didn't take her to a brothel, because we don't necessarily have brothels the same way in the United States. Um, but he would drive her around and make the dates with the, the customers for her, take her money, um, threaten her. All of the things that sound familiar to people who are working against human trafficking uh, here in the ASEAN region, uh, but it manifested itself a little bit different. What I would say is that it's that combination of hope and cruelty that the traffickers bring. They do that everywhere in the world. And the, the children and, and the youth and the young adults who want a better life for themselves, unfortunately, are often somebody that they can take advantage of. Now, on the flip side, the way that we fight this in the youth community is remarkably similar. Uh, the things, Sunita, that you're working on at, at your university um, are the things that uh, young people in the United States, in colleges and high schools, uh, and early in their career, are turning to as well. Social media, activism, um, and making sure that their voices are heard. So I think that this is a, a crime that looks very similar no matter where you are in the world, and the solution looks very similar as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ambassador Cedarbecker. And thank you very much, uh, Sunita, for um, your participation. It was a great question. And again, the work you're doing in your community is fantastic. Please keep it up. Um, at MTV Exit, we will continue to, to work with you and uh, continue to work in Cambodia as well. So we look forward to, to, to working with you again soon. So now we're flowing to the Philippines. And uh, Joey, please, again, give us a, a little bit of a background of who you are, uh, what you've been doing to, to fight uh, trafficking in your community. Okay, good morning. I am Joey De La Cruz from the Philippines. I am the, currently the acting chairperson of the UNFPA Youth Advisory Panel. And also, I am a part of the movement of anti-trafficking advocates serving as its Luzon coordinator. Um, aside from lobbying with the government, with the issues and uh, policies on human trafficking, I am also doing some issues on uh, from uh, awareness campaigns and uh, discussions not only with schools but only but also with youth advocates in order to integrate the issues of human trafficking with other pertinent issues in our country such as reproductive health and sexual reproductive health and rights <clears throat> and I would like to uh, address the question to our representative from the UNICEF um, we have heard many stories of human trafficking victims struggling to integrate into the society. How can we help defeat the negative stigma around human trafficking and encourage victims to share their stories to become peer educators and policy advocates? Great. Actually, I think um, can I, I'll throw that over to our representative from ARTIP first. So uh, please, uh, you can. <coughs> uh, it's so great to hear, Joey, that uh, you are doing such a lot of uh, fantastic work in your area. I'm <clears throat> uh, here in our country, the stigma of being uh, known as a traffic victim is much more because our society is not uh, as open as yours in the Philippines, but because uh, we have been living in a close uh, uh, sort of an enforced uh, society for such a long time. But uh, the community by itself is uh, quite open in the way that uh, they treat uh, the community members. 
So whenever a community member is being seen as being exploited or being uh, cruelly treated outside of the community, then there is usually empathy towards the victim of the society. So whenever the a victim comes back or is uh, repatriated back and is uh, reintegrated uh, uh, through the process of reintegration with the community and with the family, uh, the community will just close ranks around the victim to show their understanding, to show their empathy, to show that uh, they care for the victim and they will try to uh, sort of uh, uh, limit whatever trauma that uh, the victim has uh, suffered through their horrible experiences. Stigma, it, it's a really important uh, issue uh, uh, around trafficking uh, for victims of trafficking. So actually, I'd just like to throw, throw that to, to Deborah as well in, in terms of the work that Walk Free is doing um, uh, to combat this. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, part, of, part of building a movement uh, to end modern slavery is creating a safe place for victims to come out. Uh, uh, and showing victims that there are people in the world that are interested in helping to end their suffering and prevent uh, possible trafficking uh, issues. I think that it's important to, in order to, for the movement to really be effective, survivors are going to at some point ha uh, need to be the leaders of the movement. Um, and at, at the initial stages, I think what we're doing is really helping to lay the groundwork for that to successfully happen, to really create a world where when they do come out, they are in, they're supported uh, uh, and looked at as effective activists and organizers to prevent uh, trafficking in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, and, and that's part of the work we're doing at MTV Exit as well, which is um, really to try and um, empower people to um, like the role models um, in the fight against trafficking and uh, I think it's incredibly important. So it was a great question. Thank you very much, Jerry. So now um, we're going to Vietnam. Hang, would you uh, like to give us a little background and uh, then ask your question uh, to UNICEF? Uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. It's my honor to hang out with all of you today. Um, my name is Phan Minh Hong from Vietnam. Um, so excited to share my experience with all of you. I have joined three live shows of MTBS in Vietnam as a volunteer, and the participation of MTBS at ASEAN Youth Leader in Jakarta. Then, and then I take part in MTBS road show in Vietnam as a Youth Ambassador. And last, uh, I and other youth ambassador in Vietnam also have just created one page on Facebook with a big aim to create the community, community against human trafficking in Vietnam. And we have had 120 likes for two weeks and some of them start to talk about that topic. Uh, we do hope it will attract more and more people in the future. That's partly what I have done. And now I'd like to ask UNICEF representative to clarify my question. What opportunities are there for young people like us to work closer with NGOs and governments to fight human trafficking in our communities? Thank you. Oh, I'm very happy to answer your question. It's a great chance for me to uh, talk with you, Hang. Uh, uh, giving an example in our country, uh, uh, what we do in our country to engage youth with the communities is that we uh, involved in the we let the youth involved in the community groups like community theatrical performances groups, uh, traditional theater groups so that they can relay the message on prevention as well as protection messages through the theatrical performances. So it would be great that the communities listen to the and watching the performances, uh, the messages were embedded in the performance and dancers that we used in the community during the festival times, during the uh, celebration events with uh, Convention on the Rights of the Children's Day, etc., etc. Another is that you know, we uh, 
kind of involves the local NGOs, which is the Red Cross Society, and, and other civil society groups, youth groups, and they've been, you know, uh, empowered and built their capacity on what is about trafficking. These groups, again, were uh, reachable and to the communities where they are stay staying there because they are residents of the area. So they can get into every home and they can talk, community talks, and children's talk, children consultation group, youth group, and they can convey the protection messages on human trafficking. So this is a way how the youth group is involved and get through the community and get across the messages to prevent uh, human trafficking and uh, tell the people how to protect themselves and how to protect others. Thank you so much. Actually, I, I just want to also throw that over to Ambassador Cedarbacker in terms of young people working with uh, governments and, and, and how that, that, that sort of can be sort of very beneficial um, opportunity for them. I think that some of it is um, working through NGOs, and I think that the, the barrier to entry now for forming an NGO is so much smaller because you have access to the internet, you have access to communications technology where you can find each other and work together. But then I also think that there's that notion of working in the systems. Um, people need to uh, seek out opportunities, whether it's through internships or entry-level jobs, um, with UNICEF, with the UN uh, models, with uh, the groups like uh, RTIP and, and Walk Free, and start to get involved uh, with uh, the structures that are in place from kind of the more official um, circumstances. I think that that's one of the things that we're looking for is over the next 10 or 15 years there should be a career track in fighting human trafficking. Just like there's a career track in public health, just like there's a career track in development. People should be able to say while they're in school, I want to dedicate my life, my career to fighting human trafficking. Until we do that, this is always going to be a marginal issue with a bunch of committed people, but committed people working on the margins of those bigger um, uh, structures that are in place with career tracks. It's a great action point and uh, I think something to, to take away in terms of um, what you, you could potentially push for within your communities in your countries um, which is like to formalize um, the work that you've been doing to, to combat trafficking um, to continue building your capacity, continue learning how, how to combat um, this issue within your communities. Thank you very much for your answers. Fantastic. So now we're going over to Thailand to Julie. Uh, Julie, could you please introduce yourself, give us a little bit of a background, and then uh, direct your question to Deborah Rosen from Walk Free. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie. I am a reality youth from Thailand. Now I'm working in the Harvard of the Organization in Youth Project. Last year, uh, MTV ACID workshop in Chiang Mai. This year also, I have participated in Jiajin Kata. So, I think we're having a uh, little bit of technical issues. Um, so, um, what Julie wanted to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw the question, what, the, the question that Julie wanted to ask you, um, Deborah, was that they're beginning to run an online campaign to raise awareness of human trafficking um, through social media, um, like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Um, and she was wondering, do you think social media can have a sustainable impact on the issue? Um, People can click a link and they can share it, but then a few days later, maybe they forget about it. So, so like, how can social media be used um, to generate sustainable change? Yeah, um, I think that social media is an expression of who we are. It's, ex it's a very deep expression of our identities. We like and share and post content, like pictures um, or music or information that tells our networks about who we are and what we care about. It's kind of like wearing a t-shirt with a particular brand or an expression. You're telling people around you uh, sort of what you believe, what you think, what you care about. And so what social media is, is an, an online expression of that. And I think that when people share your content online, 
uh, or they're engaging with your content online in a way that uh, uh, publicizes it to their own networks, it's really, really inspiring because they're making uh, that information part of their own personal narrative and who they are. So with Walk Free, what we're doing is uh, working very hard to create content that people will want to share uh, and own as part of their own personal identities about uh, uh, ending modern slavery and fighting human trafficking. Uh, we're, we've had a lot of success with uh, content that um, is very accessible to people. So photos, uh, quotes, from uh, inspiring quotes, um, and particularly online actions, but making those actions or promoting those actions online in such a way that people want to take them and share them uh, with their network and help build the movement, encouraging their friends to get involved. Thank you so much. And, and uh, you know, I saw Julie coming in and out there, so hopefully um, she heard some of the answer there. Um, but thank you very much, uh, Deb. That was fantastic. Um, I've got uh, you know another question. There's another question that that Judy brought up um, that I want to actually uh, pose, um, which is about collaboration. Um, so Judy is, is is Myanmar. She lives in Mesot in in Thailand, um, and she wanted to to ask about the collaboration um, between governments and and how that can um, really be an, you know an important tool to to combat trafficking. So I, I'd like to ask. Um, can we move around to the, uh, the collaboration between governments? I believe currently there are quite a lot of uh, forums and uh, events at, through which uh, the government of the ASEAN countries are collaborating on this uh, uh, to end uh, modern day slavery. Uh, the first one which comes into my mind would be the COMET process which had started in the year 2004. That is, uh, the six uh, 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 countries of the Greater Mekong sub-region. That is one collaboration uh, in point. And then uh, another example is uh, uh, based on our project, our active, uh, our active activities, is that uh, we have uh, 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 heads of uh, specialist units collaborating uh, between the law enforcement agencies so that uh, we, uh, we share our experiences on how we can go after the traffickers, how we can uh, make life more difficult for them to operate uh, within the region and end the sort of atrocious activities in the region. And apart from that, there are other uh, uh, activities of uh, collaboration like the senior officials uh, meeting uh, based on the uh, uh, within the region which is held every year and this uh, sort of collaboration is also at the official level apart from those official uh, collaboration I believe there are quite a lot of uh, interaction between the other UN and the INUs uh, operating on this uh, 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 issue currently within the region. Right, thank you very much. Um, so what I'd like to do now is actually uh, to, to wrap up, ask each of the panelists um, to give kind of a closing statement, a call to action, what young people can do um, to, to fight human trafficking in their communities. Um, so. Ambassador Cedarbacker. Well, first of all, I'd like to, to thank uh, Simon and everybody at MTV Exit. I think that one of the things that we've seen with the Ambassadors Program is it really is um, educating the next generation of leaders. That leadership then needs to not only be in collaboration across the ASEAN platform, uh, but also uh, around the world. I think one of the ways that you take the online activism um, from simply sharing uh, something uh, and then moving on to the next cause, which happens uh, way too often, um, is to really build that kind of community. Once everybody's working together, once we can start organizing ourselves, not just with pressure on local governments, on uh, state governments and national governments, but coming to the ASEAN um, forums and coming to uh, the bigger multilateral things and letting the, the voice of the youth of Southeast Asia be heard. 
that people are ready to stand up and say no to human trafficking. That's when we're going to make a difference. Thank you so much. Yin -yin. Uh, I would like to say to the youth, uh, we, uh, we together uh, empowered the youth, and at the same time, the youth empowered the community to involve in the whole process to combat human trafficking uh, in Myanmar, as well as in ASEAN country, as well as in global, uh, uh, worldwide areas. Thank you. Good. Thank you. <coughs> Guys, all of you have been doing such a lot of great things in your countries, as you have mentioned uh, very briefly. From our side, uh, uh, one thing comes into my mind, which is uh, the youth forums, especially the Mekong Youth Forum, which is being held, and uh, our some of our youths who are most actively uh, engaged in this issue will represent and share their views. And... Uh, Although our country is uh, uh, much uh, less developed in terms of the use of social media than in your country, the, the participation in the Youth Forum and the Mekong Youth Forum, and even uh, with the limited uh, use of the social media, like Facebook, Twitter is not very uh, active in our country as yet. Facebook, yeah, it's coming up very strongly. So all of these things uh, should make for greater interaction amongst the youth. And, uh, and I believe that the network amongst all of you activists would uh, greatly enhance uh, the fight against uh, ending modern day slavery. Fantastic points. Thank you so much. And Thank Deborah. I would echo, uh, I would definitely echo those sentiments. I think that uh, social media it presents a wonderful opportunity for us to connect with each other. And the work that you guys described earlier in the program uh, uh, is so inspiring, I think, to this panel, but is also inspiring to your uh, peers that are also organizing all over the world. And so finding ways for us to connect and work with each other to learn from each other what is and isn't working so that we can uh, implement the best strategies and tactics to really get people involved is really important as a next step. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, just to, to, to wrap up now, I'd like to thank all the panelists for participating today and, and giving us your views on this issue. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sunita, Joey, Hang, and Julie for joining us and, and sort of sharing a little bit of your experiences, um, sharing with us uh, um, sort of what you've been doing to combat trafficking in your communities, which is inspiring. And um, we will continue to work with you um, because you really are the future of this region and the future of ASEAN. So it's, it's so important that, that you're playing the role you are. I'd like to thank all our donors and uh, everybody who has have made this um, campaign a possibility. So um, to the Myanmar government for their support, to USA, to OZA, to Walk Free, to UNIAP. Um, we talked about collaboration. Really, we can't do this without everybody working together. Um, and thank you to Google for facilitating this um, first from Myanmar, first Google Hangout from um, Myanmar. So a quick shout out. Please connect with us online um, through Facebook, through Twitter. Also, you'll be, you can join USAID and AusAid and walk free um, through um, uh, social media as well. So please be a part of the dialogue um, to combat trafficking and, and, and continue to share your experiences. And uh, good luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you very much.